So you're looking into purchasing your first camera. That's exciting, right? Or just confusing. I mean, there are so many options. And there's so many things you need to learn too. The process of buying your first camera isn't very good. It actually kind of sucks. But if you stick with me for the rest of this video, hopefully I can make it suck a little bit less. Now, when buying anything, there are three really big questions that everyone needs to ask themselves. And if you're hoping to make a career as a photographer or videographer, it is a good idea to get in the habit of asking yourself these three questions whenever you're buying any piece of camera equipment. The first question to ask is, what is my budget? Now, if this is your very first camera and you're just starting out, I already have an answer for you. It's $500. I know that might sound limiting, that might sound frustrating, and you might think, yeah, but I don't know of any new cameras on the market that cost that price. I want a camera that I'm gonna like and that I'm gonna use for a really long time, and $500 is not that much money. Are you gonna get the most feature-packed, beautiful camera of your dreams when you're spending $500 on a camera? No, but that's okay. There's several reasons why I recommend that you spend a very low amount of money on your first camera. The camera is really a small percentage of the video equipment that you're gonna be needing to use. You have lenses, do you have tripods, do you have lights, do you have microphones, do you have microphone stands? No surprise here, but filmmaking is an expensive art. And if you're just starting out, well, you probably don't have that much money. So if you skimp out on the price and if you skimp out on the cost of the camera, well, then you have a little bit more money to spend on all these other goodies, which really, in my opinion, make up for much better quality. The other reason that I only recommend that you spend about $500 or less on a camera is because of question number two. Question number two, what are your needs? This really goes hand in hand with the first question because the more you need, the more expensive things are gonna be. And the more specific you can get at answering this question, the better. Now, if you're saying to yourself, I don't know anything, this makes me really stressed because I don't understand all these camera specs. Relax, because your first camera, its main purpose is to be able to help you learn. Because your first camera is not going to be your best camera. I'm sorry to disappoint you guys, but the reason that you buy your first camera is not to be able to make the most beautiful art. It's just not. The reason you buy your first camera is because you want to learn how to use a camera. As you move forward in your career, you find out what your needs are and you're able to address them a lot more because you have more experience and you have a better idea of what your clients want. So as you move forward in your career, you're going to be able to serve their needs best with your equipment and you're able to tailor your needs to your gear. You don't know what your needs are and you might think that you need certain specs, but then they don't really benefit you or help you. And as you move forward and make more art and create more content, you're gonna discover more and more what your specific needs are. I bought my very first professional camera three years ago, and it was the Canon 60D. A really irrelevant camera, a camera that did not have autofocus, didn't have the best low light, didn't have any low light really. The slow motion was an absolute joke. And as bad as that camera was, it was the perfect camera for me at the time. Why am I so stoked about that camera? Why was that the camera that really kicked off my career and taught me the most? That camera didn't have autofocus, so I had to learn how to use manual focus lenses. But because I couldn't take the ISO past like 800 before things would look really ugly, I had to learn how to be able to light a subject properly and how to be able to compose my shots well because I wasn't able to depend on things like 4K and reframing the shot in post. If I would have had that capability, I would have been pretty lazy. And when you just start out, all of the art that you're producing is, uh, not really that good. And buying a more expensive camera isn't gonna solve those problems. What will solve those problems and what's gonna turn you into a real expert in this field is by spending 100,000 hours practicing and learning how to be able to do your craft. This is just where you're at in your life. This is just where you're at in your career. And as you develop your skills and you figure out what your needs are and you wanna show people what you're really capable of, then that's the time to be able to upgrade and invest more in your equipment. And I highly recommend that you invest in your equipment. In my lifetime, I've had three different cameras that I was getting paid to use in one way or another. And each one of these cameras I bought to serve a different need and to be able to, to solve an individual problem, which now I'm realizing goes into the next question. How is this purchase beneficial? Regardless of whether it's beneficial to you, your family, or your clients, if you don't have an answer to that question, you're thinking to yourself, well, I just want a camera because it looks kind of cool. Don't buy a camera. The Canon 60D I bought because I really wanted to learn. The Fujifilm X-T2 had amazing specs for the price and I was able to really show my full potential with it and build out a really great portfolio. And the Panasonic G85 is just a really great package of a camera for what I'm doing right now, which is YouTube. I've heard it said before that there's no such thing as the perfect camera and I completely agree with that. That makes a lot of sense to me. But I also agree that there's no such thing as a bad camera. Every camera has its own purpose. Every camera can 
can be used in one way or another. And I think that if you buy a camera that is in your place and in your market and doesn't cost you an arm and a leg, spend that money on other accessories and other features that you can add to that camera to be able to help you. And when you've reached the limitations of that camera and you understand what you are actually shooting and what you're using your camera for, whether that's YouTube videos or professional Hollywood cinema, then you can go out and find a camera that is in your price bracket that will match your needs best. An iPhone might be great for one person and a Red Epic will be great for someone else. And that doesn't mean that either of these cameras are bad, it just means that they're not built for certain circumstances. The reason that I'm not giving any specific recommendations on what cameras I think are the best cameras right now are because I don't know who you are. Because there are dozens of different people in different situations who are watching this video. And I think it would be very foolish of me to say that this camera or that camera is the best. Anyway, that's just my two cents. I hope you guys have learned something and that this video was beneficial to you. Be sure to take a look in the description down below and you're gonna find links to my favorite camera equipment, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best camera equipment. It's just the camera equipment that I think works really well for my needs. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure that the notification bell is being rung so that you're getting notifications on a regular basis. You know what, do all that jazz, and I will see you next time. Take care. See, I was able to, see, I pop, I pop, 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 I don't know where I'm going with this sentence. Ah. I wish I could turn on my air conditioner. Woof. Do you have batteries? Do you have SD cards? Do you have batteries? I already said batteries.